there are many trolleys available in market one cannot just go into the shop and purchase any model that is available there we have to consider lot of things while purchasing a trolley the trolley should be at least of about four and a half feet it should not be more than six feet or taller than the surgeon because the monitor comes at the top level if you purchase a trolley which is of six feet then the monitor height will go beyond six and a half to seven feet and that can cause neck pain and strain so while purchasing a trolley the most important is the height that should be around four and a half feet secondly there are different slots available these slots should be adjustable if you have a co2 insufflator which you purchase later on and that cannot fit here then you will be compromised placing it lower down which is not the correct position so you should have a trolley with where the flaps are adjustable so these are the minimum requirements of a trolley <clears throat> now where do you keep this trolley the trolley has to be a mobile trolley because in different surgeries you will have different positions of this trolley so there should be a good wheels available for this trolley which will make it easy to move secondly very important and very expensive instruments are going to be mounted on this trolley so it should be a sturdy one it should not fall off and break all your very expensive instruments so i think the important highlight points are the height of the trolley the sturdiness of the trolley the wheel alignment of the trolley for easy movements and lastly is the adjustable racks according to the number of instruments you are planning to purchase and the plans you are going to make for uh, stabilizing keeping the instruments at different racks one of the most important point while purchasing a trolley is to have a good electrical supply each instrument should not carry its supply to the wall unit instead there should be a single input which should be connected to the wall unit and all instruments should receive the electrical supply from within this is a very very important step while purchasing a trolley now the next important step is the uh, optics in optics you have a very important feature that is the monitor the monitors now are coming up into a high definition monitors or called as the medical grade monitors the minimum diagonal distance of a medical grade monitor that is required for good vision is 44 centimeters so this is the minimum that should be there for a hd monitor and the height of the monitor should be at the same level of the height of the surgeon sometimes this can be adjusted just by moving the monitor up so this is an extra advantage that you should ask for while purchasing a monitor so this is the simple technique of having a monitor which is easily adjustable secondly the distance which the monitor should be kept from the operating table is there is a minimum distance and a maximum distance minimum the monitor should be kept at least 1.6 times the diagonal diameter of the monitor and maximum it should be six times from the table it should not go beyond that otherwise you will compromise with the image so this is the basic thing the diagonal diameter the height of the monitor and the distance from the operating table that have to be considered for a good vision in surgery the next important thing on the trolley is the insufflators the insufflators are of different sizes accordingly as i told the rack should be adjustable the insufflator should be below the camera and it should be at a level higher than that of the patient the co2 gas should be coming from a higher level into the patient and the fluid or the aspirate should not go back into the insufflator and cause contamination so this is the second step in case of arranging a trolley so the basic points are the insufflator should be next in the trolley it should be at a level higher than that of the patient it should be at a level visible to the surgeon the inflow the amount of abdominal pressure the set pressure the flow rate and the 
gas that has been used up should all be visible while performing a surgery. The trolley should be wide enough to accommodate two instruments side by side. Otherwise, if you practically try to arrange all instruments vertically, then it will be a very big trolley. So, this at least two instruments should be accommodated. Next important aspect of the optics is the camera. One of the very important thing, the camera has to be arranged not necessarily at the same level, but the connection or the output from the camera should reach the monitor. It cannot be at a far distance. So, it has to be on the trolley and like we said these three instruments give an output which reach the patient. So, this is called as the umbilical cord of the trolley. The light source cable coming to the patient, the CO2 cable coming to the patient and the camera itself coming to the patient. These three things together should form the umbilical cord and the distance should not be too far or too less and there should not be any entanglement in between these things. So, practically between the table and this umbilical cord, there should be no any other instrument kept there. Another important instrument on a trolley is the irrigation suction or the aspiration system. That can be placed another either at the same level or still lower level. So, the trolley has to have multiple racks to accommodate the basic required instruments or if at all you keep on upgrading your systems that can get accommodated on this trolley but definitely there should not be too much of overcrowding on this trolley. Now comes the very important part that is the electrosurgical units. One has to understand that the electrosurgical units should be not on the same trolley but you can have a separate trolley. If at all you don't have space and you have to keep your electrosurgical units on the trolley then definitely the electrical supply for this electrosurgical units should not be the same as that for the rest of the instruments on the trolley. Secondly, the electrosurgical instruments should not go very low down on the ground but should be at a higher level. This is the minimum requirement that the power supply should be different from the rest of the instruments and ideally it should be away from the main trolley. A very important part of surgery is the anesthesia and general anesthesia is the mainstay in case of laparoscopy. For general anesthesia you need a unit which will give a constant pressures so an inbuilt ventilator would be very handy. Secondly if you have instruments which can deliver low flow anesthetic drugs then that will save a lot of cost and unnecessary gas going into the patient is avoided and also the recovery, post-op recovery of the patients is definitely very good with low flow machines. So it is very very important to have for the safety factors as well as for the cost effectiveness and for the biohazards of the anesthetic gases to have a closed circuit low flow inbuilt ventilator machine. The monitoring of the patient is the mainstay in laparoscopy. We have been having the pulse oximeter, the SpO2 saturation monitoring or the NIBP monitoring. But now it is time for all of us to add CO2 monitoring. The capnography is very very important for patient safety. And I feel now the upgradation should be for CO2 monitoring because day by day the types of surgeries, the advancement in the instruments and the higher order surgeries be, are being performed. So it is a must now to do a capnography or the CO2 monitoring while uh, monitoring a patient for surgery. One of the mainstay of surgery is a good operation table. There are multiple factors that have to be considered while purchasing an operation table. Of course, it should be a very sturdy table. Secondly, the most important is the head low. Head low will make you do very difficult surgeries very comfortably. So, the table should have a good head low. And what is important while giving a head low is the fulcrum of the table. So, when you are buying a table, buy a table with a fulcrum at the center. So, with this, if you give head low, the height of the pelvic end will not go very high up. If you have this fulcrum at the head end and if you give slightest of the tilt, the head low, 
the leg ends will go very high up and it will come above uh, up to your chest so it's very difficult to operate whenever you are operating the height of the table should always be below the waist of the surgeon in even if you give a head low the height should not go beyond your waist otherwise your hands will go up and that is not the ergonomic way of performing surgeries so a table which can go very low down a table which is very sturdy a table which can give extreme head low or the right and the left tilts or the pelvic tilts these are the things that should be considered while buying an operation table for laparoscopy a mechanical one and an electronic one would be a very handy but at least it should have a good mechanical head low head up and lateral tilt positions this is a very important thing we see many people using this leg stirrups for giving positions in laparoscopy and i feel this is absolutely wrong to use this stands for laparoscopic surgeries what we should have is an ideal adjustable height adjustable as well as going front and back the thigh and the calf support this is a must for a laparoscopy and i would recommend this should be not at all used while performing a laparoscopic surgery